Hey everybody, it's Timmy Gobbles, and in this video today I'm going to talk about L systems. So here you have what you might expect from a random walk, just a path that's kind of going all over the place. But instead of generating this with a random walk algorithm, I'm actually using a uh, like letter text replacement algorithm, um, usually known as an L system and it makes these neat little paths. So I use this little rule right here to generate it. Now if I take out the third uh, option, it ends up more like this. So instead of having a um, average that's centered around the origin, it tends to wander off up into the left. And if you want to read more about L systems, there's a lot of literature out there. You just kind of got to look for it. But here's the basics of it. You start with an initial state and a production rule. So say we have the rule A is replaced with ABA. So we start with A and that gets replaced with ABA. Uh, next, we're gonna take that state one and take all the A's and replace them with ABA. So then the first A becomes ABA, the B is left alone and the second A becomes ABA. And then we can go ahead and do the third state. So, uh, Again, with each A, it gets replaced by ABA, and each B gets left alone. So as you can see, the state grows rather rapidly, uh, depending kind of on the production rule and how many characters that get replaced are in that production rule. And so here I've gone ahead and coded that in Godot. So you have an initial state, we have a grow function, and then later on I'll talk about, talk about the turtle graphics. Actually, I'll do it right here. So uh, for turtle, F means go forward, uh, plus means turn to the right, and minus means turn to the left. And I'll get into brackets later. But basically, this is a way to draw the path that I did um, initially in the video. So I have a production rule with F's, pluses, and minuses and that makes some kind of path. Now, now to do branching paths instead of just a single path, um, you can use open bracket to represent start a new path and close bracket to terminate that path. And using push and pop and a queue and a way to keep track of the direction and the location of the paths, um, you can add branches to it. And I added this quick little rotation for um, vector two eyes uh, that ended up just being a match statement uh, for my turn left, turn rights. And so here I've made a rule with branches. So you can see it doesn't create a continuous path and because it has a lot of branches, it's uh, making a lot of those. And I ended up had to pad the, um, the apps a little bit to stretch it out so you can see it better. But it kind of makes this um, tree kind of shape. And, you know, if we go ahead and make that six growths instead of just five, you can end up with a really big, messy, ugly tree. But it's kind of neat that uh, you can generate these shapes with pretty simple rules. So another thing you can do is make the growths rule have some randomness to it. So here it's a very similar growth rule as the last one, except sometimes it just goes forward and sometimes it turns the other direction. That was a few too many steps. So here we'll kind of cut that down to four. And you can see that the general shape is the same, but there's the features are a little different. So here I'm gonna write a new rule. My dog's going nuts in the background. Uh, so what I need is I need to check if the character uh, needs to trigger the rule or not. If it doesn't, then we're just going to pass that character back through uh, because I don't want to change that character. And unfortunately, there's a lot of functions that start with S. Okay, so now that we've ruled out characters I don't care about, uh, next I need to look at when, that, um, when S is F. 
I think S stands for string. I'm not sure what I was doing here. Um, and so we'll want some Fs or else our, um, our state will eventually dwindle to nothing. Here's a little twisty pattern. Sometimes it's nice to start with a kind of general curvy shape and then to throw in your randomness. Sometimes when you start with the randomness, it's hard to tell if it's going to make a shape you like. So here I'm starting with a forward, a turn left forward and a bracket and a forward. And then I'm going to have it go the other way too. And so this makes a neat little kind of, like it kind of reminds me of the caves in like Diablo 2, the kind of general map shape where you have one big branch and some little smaller branches. This one, I think I grew it a little too large. And sometimes I like to cut the Fs out if uh, it gets too big, but I want room for it to grow. So this looks a little better, but it's it's a little too jagged, but it does make some nice okay-ish paths. And one thing you can do is you can have the path um, generate in the physics process. So actually, here I'm stacking them on top of Okay, gotta clear the tile map before I place the next one. Um, kind of rapid fire showing them can get you a general idea of how they trend. Because the, the starting point's always the same. I always have it at zero, zero. But here you see these tend to go up and to the right a bit. And if we get rid of one of the neutral states, that's about the same. This rule was kind of neat. It made little hook paths kind of curl in on each other. One thing you want to consider is whether or not you want your path to have loops in it or not. Um, some people like perfect mazes and those will never have a loop in them. But sometimes those make kind of boring dungeons. Sometimes it's nice. But like here's an instance where there's too much freedom, right? It curls around on itself too often. Another problem I have is they always end up being a little bit too long. But I think that's something I could fix with either cellular automata or um, maybe some kind of like averaging function. Another thing you have to look out for, especially when you're growing more than three times, is you don't accidentally generate a bunch of swastikas. Um, that's about all I have to say about L systems. So, so I had some things to say about the channel. I really don't like editing videos, uh, but you know, I really do like doing Godot stuff. I haven't put out a video in a couple months um, and some like general life stuff happened that kind of got in the way and I kind of lost my groove, but I want to get back into it. I just need to find a workflow where it doesn't take me, you know, five hours to edit a video. That's just too much. So I was thinking of putting out maybe like a couple of short things like, you know, here's how you use resources or I don't know, arrays or something simple in Godot, or maybe I'll do like a binary heap or something. I did that recently. That was fun. But other than that, I don't know how many long videos I want to do. Um, if you check out my itch, I have a small roguelike I've been working on. And I've kind of made some progress with that. And it's got a nice dungeon generator and it has a field of view thing going on. So I was thinking of doing some videos related to that. Um, but I've just been having so much fun working on it that I didn't really want to play with DaVinci. 
Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to say I'm still putting stuff out. Uh, I'd love it if you could subscribe. Uh, if you have anything you want to request, I love working on those. So, you know, feel free to ask those. And I'm vaguely getting better at coding. So I, the help I might put out might even get better over time. Who knows? And that's all I have for today. I hope you have a good one.